Um, that was that was awesome. I just really think this is this is what the God has to say, you know. Um, so this is in Hebrews two verse fourteen and fifteen. It says, "Inasmuch as the children have partaken of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same." That this is talking about Jesus. That through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is the devil. And it goes over into verse fifteen, and it says, "And release those." who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. So think about this for a minute. Jesus came down and people, one of the biggest hindrances that people have in their walk with the Lord is fear. Do you know that? And fear is the enemy of faith. But it says here that Jesus came and through his, through his sacrifice, he released those who through fear of death were all of their lifetime subject to bondage. I believe that Jesus is in the business of breaking bondages. Amen. 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 So if you've come here today because you need a breakthrough, you've come to the right church. You're not here by accident, right? You didn't just wander in and think, oh, these strange English people are coming into town. I'll give that a whirl. Okay, this is a divine (laughs) appointment. Amen. God has sent you here because he has something specific for you today. I really believe that there are going to be people here today that are going to be set free from fear. Fear, I mean, it, it says in here fear of death, but you know what? There's, there's death comes in many forms. The people, some people have dead finances. They have dead flesh, amen? They have dead relationships. They have hopeless situations. But the Lord is saying, you know what? Perfect love casts out fear, amen? amen? He is the bondage breaker, and I believe that this is a season of breakthrough for you. So you have come to the right place. You're going to hear a good message that's going to help you in, um, just in, in, the, in the first steps, if you like, as to stepping into everything that Jesus has for you. Ash is going to be teaching on finances, but you know what? Fin- and, and Ash will say this, finances are so important because they are least of all these things. Mm-hmm. You know, they are a baby step. If you're believing for your health, if you're believing for your relationships, whatever it is, when we start believing God for our finances, it's a baby step in the realm of faith. And it'll help you. It'll help you. So here, receive what Ashley has to, for you today, but I believe that there is going to be breakthrough, and we'll be happy to pray for you at the end. Amen? Amen. All right, here he is. Okay. Yeah, I've got my own one. Oh, you got your own one? Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Max. Praise God. It's, it's great to be here. Thank you for having us. And, um, you know, this is a great place, praise God. I've, I've heard a lot of good things about it, and all the expectations were right. It's a, this is a great church. I can already tell that by visiting with some of you. And uh, Max and Molly are great pastors. You're in good hands. Let me tell you, this is a great church. You're in good hands. If I lived in Kansas City, I'd be at this church. Let me tell you. So if I lived within an hour and a half drive of this place, I'd be here. So if you're visiting today and you haven't got a home church, I can recommend this church. Max and Molly, I've known them for three, four years at least, uh, close up. Watch them in leadership, watch them deal with people, watch them deal with challenges, and they're the real deal. This is a grace and faith church. This is a church that's going to teach you the love of God. It's not going to put you under the law. It's not going to put you under condemnation. It's going to show you the love of God and show you how to walk in victory, praise God. So you're in good hands here. So, And then uh, Neil and uh, Sarah with the kids and, and uh, Becky back there. I know these guys. These are, these are the real deal. So you're in great hands here, praise God. At Karis Kingdoms. This is, K, this is CKC. KC. Come on. I just worked that out myself. I worked that out myself. <laughs> so this is a great place to be. I know some of you are visiting, and like I said, if you haven't got a home church and you're local, then you're very welcome here, praise God. And uh, as you can tell, I'm not from Kansas City. I'm a long way from Kansas. <laughs> I've actually been in America for nine years. We moved over here nine years ago. We're from the UK and uh, from England, and we're from the second best country in the world. We now live in the best country in the world. Amen? So I mean that. I really mean that. I really mean that, praise God. I, I appreciate America more being English. So, And uh, we're graduates of Caris Bible College. We went in 2006, and um, then we, we were on staff there. And actually, just uh, two and a half months ago, um, I got pushed out the nest. God pushed me out the nest of Andrew Romack Ministries and Caris Bible College to start our own ministry. And my, my attitude was, why start our own ministry? We work for the best ministry in the world. I believe Andrew Romack Ministries is the best teaching ministry in the world. If you want some real good grace and faith teaching, then uh, check Andrew Romack out. But you know what? It was, it was time, and I met with Andrew, and he, he agreed, and my other mentors agreed. So uh, we, I've launched out on, with Teredes Ministries, is our ministry name. Very original, I know, Teredes Ministries. But it's got great SEO because there's no other Teredes in America. So if you type in Teredes, we take up the first five pages of Google, and we didn't even pay for it, praise God. So we're blessed. <laughs> So uh, you can connect with us there. We've also got Facebook and YouTube and Twitter and all that. You can connect with us. In fact, every Friday night at 6 p.m., we have a Facebook Live, which is really fun. It's me and Carly, and we, we just sit in the lounge and, and chat to you and answer your questions and pray for you, and it's powerful. We had, we've had healings. In fact, last week, there was a great healing. Um, this guy was healed. Uh, we had two healings just from last week, right? Carly called out words and knowledge, and these people were 100% healed. It was powerful. So that's 6 p.m. 
on Facebook on uh, 6 p.m. Mountain Time. So that is 7 p.m. here. It's even better, 7 p.m. Got time to get home from work. Friday nights. Everyone said, don't do anything Friday night. But I think when you get old like us, who does anything Friday night? So I mean, it's like you stay home. And then, so there you go. We, you may know us also from our daughter Hannah's story. Our daughter Hannah was actually healed in 2006. That's how we met Andrew Romick. That's how we met the Grace Gospel, if you like. And um, you can find that on our website. If you go to terradesministries.com and hit about, there's a 28-minute uh, documentary on Hannah. It's been around the world. People have literally been born again through watching that documentary. So go there and watch that. Get your Kleenex ready. It's powerful. Praise God. It's all glory to God. It's powerful. So... I want to make sure also uh, Pastor Lawson Badu of Caris Christian Centre wanted to greet you personally. I think he's been here once already. So uh, he loves his church and he loves uh, uh, Max and, and Molly and um, he's, he wants to send his greetings. So praise God. You're part of something bigger. I believe the grace message, this message, and really it's not really, in fact I was talking to um, Kenneth Copeland's grandson. Kenneth Copeland's grandson's in the ministry now and um, he got into the grace message and everyone kept saying to him out of the faith camp, you know, they, all the big guns kept saying, so what do you think about this grace message, grace message? And he said, what, you mean Jesus, right? You mean the gospel. There is no grace message. It's just the real gospel. It's just Jesus, amen? So it's like this whole grace thing, this is just the real gospel. The real gospel is, you know what? It's already been done for us. Jesus provided it all, and we just say, yes, sir, and that's our faith response to receive it, praise God. So this is a great, great church, and you're part of something bigger, I believe. So, uh, you know, I, I did mention that eight, nine years ago, we moved over here from England. Oh, product, I always forget this. Okay, I've got to tell you about what we've got. We brought stuff with us. We left all the junk at home, so we've only got the good stuff. <laughs> this is Carly's book. This is Miracles Made Easy. Carly's a great teacher on, on uh, uh, healing, faith, miracles, things like that. She's received healing from grand mal seizure, epilepsy. That means she couldn't be left on her own with the kids. She was in such a bad way. She couldn't drive a car. She couldn't have a driver's license. I still wonder if she can drive a car, but she's got a license. She has got a license. <laughs> so <laughs> drive past the store, and I see my car like abandoned up the sidewalk, and I see someone stole my car and abandoned it. But it's just Carly's parking. So anyway, <laughs> but she, she was healed of grand mal seizure epilepsy um, 13 years ago, never had another seizure, never had any, she was on 11 medications, never had any more medications, completely healed. Our, ha our daughter Hannah was healed with a week to live. These stories are in here, stories of faith and miracles. This will really bless you. If you need a miracle, this will really bless you. So who wants to run this? Pastor Max, maybe you could, who needs a miracle today? Hold your hand up and I'll give that to you. We'll give that to you. This is, a <laughs> this is my book on um, finances. And that was really, really kind of you, Pastor Max. I'll pay you later what you said about me. But this is my book on finance, and this is, this is your tri tripod to financial success. There's three things that you really need to, to uh, have working in your life to see the supernatural uh, prosperity in your life, and uh, I'll explain some of that today. But this will really bless you. This is called Thorns, Barns, and Oil Jars. It's a funny title. You have to buy the book to find out what it's about. But who needs a financial breakthrough today? I'll let Max give that. He's got a thankless job giving that to someone. And then... Um, this is my, my wife's teaching called Dress for Success, but I teach a little bit on here. This is a whole course on how to... Hey, Charlotte and Mark, how are you doing? Just, just saw you there. <laughs> this, this is a great course on how to um, walk in victory, how to walk in the armor of God, Ephesians 6. I teach on here about head, how to hear the voice of God, you know. How do we know when it's the flesh, when it's God, or when it's the devil? You ever been there? I've been there a lot. You know? yeah. God, is that you? Is it the devil? Is it my flesh? Is it too much pizza the night before? What is it? Speak it to me. <laughs> this will show you about that and uh, some other practical things, very practical teaching uh, called Dress for Success. So who needs to hear the voice of God more clearly and learn how to uh, walk in the armor of God? Praise the Lord. This is my wife's teaching, who do you think you are? She says this to me sometimes. Who do you think you are? <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think you are? It talks about your identity. It's a single CD teaching. It talks about your identity in Christ, who you are in Christ, your identity in Christ. This is powerful. And inside of the here comes one of these confession cards. So this is really powerful teaching. In fact, when uh, we teach at Caris Bible College, and I'll teach and I'll give it my everything, you know, blood, sweat and tears, my best teaching ever. And then students will come up to me afterwards and they'll say, Ashley, our lives were changed. And I say, yeah? When were they changed? They said, yesterday when your wife taught. I said, okay. <laughs> she is a great teacher, especially on identity. She will really bless you. So who needs to know their identity in Christ more clearly? Let me give that to you. This is, our, uh, this is my teaching on finances. This is the one that Max was talking about. He's been, so you've been through this twice? I have. I'm sorry. <laughs> this, is, this is a practical prosperity. This is a very practical course just on how... To, I love Dave Ramsey's stuff as well. Um, but what this is, this is going to teach you the supernatural side of things as well. And I know Dave Ramsey believes a lot of the supernatural, but because his audience is secular, he doesn't deal with that. But this deals with our stronghold thought patterns about prosperity, our giving, 
uh, how to save money on purchases and things like that. I also have another course out there called Buy, Sell, Repeat, and that actually teaches you how to buy and sell things on Craigslist and eBay and things and make extra money. There's a little bit of that in here, but that's, that's a whole course on that. But I love teaching people on finances because I tell people the easier it is to make money, the easier it is to give money. And I don't care how spiritual you are. If you work you know, for, for a whole month at a chicken skinning factory, or, you know, or, or emptying Mr. Potts or whatever it is. They're all good jobs if you, got one, if you work like that. That's, praise God, it's honourable. But if you do that for, for a month and then God says, give that missionary $1,000 or $1,500, it's harder to do that than if you buy and sell something and make it in an hour. So I'm just saying the easier it is to make money, the easier it is to give money. So practical prosperity. Who needs a financial breakthrough? I'll let Pastor Max give that to someone. That's a nine-part CD intensive course, and there's even a curriculum on a disc on the back there that comes with that as well. And the last thing I want to tell you about is Carly's confession card. This is... Um, a confession card about who you are in Christ and you uh, put your name in the top here and this is so powerful there is scripture after scripture on this card and it says things like this it says I'm the head and not the tower I'm above the circumstances not beneath them I lack no good thing nothing can separate me from the love of God my faith can move mountains my words contain life and death the creator of the universe my dad loves me with an everlasting love I've been crucified with Christ. I'm chosen by God. I have the mind of Christ. I'm anointed by God. I was created by him for good works. And on, on, on. I just read the first little bit. This will really bless you. I use this almost daily. I use this because it really reminds you who you are in Christ. And you know what? Your flesh sometimes or your circumstances can seem like this isn't true. So we need to get back to the mirror, back to the word of God and realize, yeah, this is who I am, even though I don't feel like it. Body, you are this. Mind, you are this, you know? So you put your name on here and pray this. I pray this every, uh, probably every day. I mean, at least five times a week. It is powerful. And we're going to give everyone one of these if you want one. All we ask in exchange is we need your details. Okay, so it's this harmless uh, exchange here. You give us your email, we'll give you one of these cards. It's as simple as that. I'm, I'm going to be upfront about it. I want your email address. <laughs> and then I'm going to spam you with an email every hour. No, you're getting it maybe one a week at the most. But anyway... If you get, and we'll actually send you a physical copy. We'll give you a physical copy if you want. I've got an iPad out there. You can write your physical details on, and we'll give you one of these. Or you can go to our website, terradesministries.com, and right on the home page, it says enter your details. We'll email it to you instantly, and we'll also mail it to you, but we won't mail it to you for a couple of weeks because we're on the road. But when we get home, we'll mail, mail you one of those cards each. Praise God. That will really bless you. Amen? Amen. In God good? You know, we moved over here nine years ago. We moved from the kingdom of England to the kingdom of America. And what we found out was this, and you do some things differently here. First of all, we speak a very different language. Yeah. We call it English, but there's a lot of different words. We won't go there. In fact, I embarrassed myself last week. I was um, speaking for Andrew at the Summer Family Bible Conference, and I held up what I thought was what we call in England is a flask, a flask, a flask. But I understand <laughs> that really a flask for you is much more alcohol-related, right? So everyone started laughing, so I thought it was because I said flask. So I said, oh, you mean flask? And they started laughing again. I was like... I was like, this is what I give my, my kids have got these when we go on hikes. And everyone's laughing. <laughs> then I realized we call them, you call them thermos, right? Thermos or water bottle, we call them flasks. Anyway, there's a lot of different words. You drive on the wrong side of the road. I mean, different side of the road. <laughs> I got here nine years ago. I got in my car. I'm driving along. Nice day, three-lane highway. I see three cars coming straight towards me. <laughs> it's a true story. Big highway. I thought, what are these three idiots doing on the wrong side of the road? And I thought, it's me. I've, for 20 years or whatever, I've been driving on the right side of the road, now I drive, no, on the left side, whatever way it is, this side. I'm driving on the wrong side, so I had to do a quick U-turn. They told me I was number one at the next stoplight, it was nice. <laughs> but even now, it was just recently, I'm at the gas station, and I'm, I pump gas, and I open the passenger door of my car, I get in the car, shut the door, look up, the steam was gone. <laughs> it's on the other side. I'm so used to this side, and then I'm thinking, people are obviously watching me and thinking, that crazy guy got in the wrong car, so... I thought, I'll play it cool. I open the glove box. I look through there. Find the, the owner's manual. I was looking for the owner's manual, everyone. Get out. Walk back around again. Get in the driver's side. We're good. We're good. You spend that long doing something in one kingdom, and you move to another kingdom, it's hard to, to, to adapt. You know, in Colossians 1.13, Colossians 1.13, it says, he's translated us from the kingdom of darkness and put us in the kingdom of the son of his love. Who's born again here today? How many of you are born again? If you're born again today, I've got news for you. Okay, you are in the new kingdom now. You may live here in the world, but you're ambassadors for Christ. You're seated with him in heavenly places. You're one spirit of the Lord. You no longer live just on earth. You live in heaven spiritually. That's your address. So now you do things by the heaven's way. You do things by the kingdom's uh, rules or purposes or laws. That's how it works now. And if you try and do things the same as you were before in the world, you're going to get frustrated. If I said, you know what, bless God, I've been driving 20 years on this side of the road. I'm just going to carry on. It's going to be okay. 
I don't understand why you drive on the other side of the road. I don't understand why. I'm just going to keep driving on my side of the road. It feels more comfortable. I'm going to go for it. How do you know I would not have made it here today? I wouldn't have made it the 590 miles. If, you know what? It wouldn't have happened, right? It would have been a wreck, dead, arrested, right, something. Right, right, right. Okay, so it doesn't matter if you don't understand why. You just have to understand there is a difference now. There's a new way of doing things. Let me give you some examples. In the world, you know, if you want to be, in the kingdom of God, if you want to be first, what does it say? You've got to be last. Does that make any sense to the natural world's way? No, if you want to be first, you've got to push yourself first, you've got to step on other people, and you've got to be first. No, the kingdom of God says you be last, you make yourself last, and you'll be first. What about if you want to be a leader, a ruler of all? You want to be the, you want to be the big boss, the, the boss hog, number one. Okay, do you know what the Bible says? Do you know what the kingdom of God says? You've got to serve everyone. Yeah. Let me tell you, Max Cornell will be the biggest servant in this church because he's, he's been humble, by being humble like that and serving, he's lifted up to be the senior pastor. That's the, that's the way a senior pastor runs his church, by serving people. That's what he does here. He serves, if you didn't notice. So, God, so who's the best leader in the world ever? Jesus. What did he do? He served. The last day, he got down on his hands and knees and washed their feet. So you want to be the first? You've got to be last. You want to be the, the ruler of all? You've got to be the servant of all. You want, you've got an enemy? You love them. This, is cra- this doesn't make sense to the world's way of doing things, right? Someone wrongs you, you forgive them. You want wisdom? You speak in tongues. You speak in babble. There's so many things in the kingdom of God that work opposite to the world's way of doing things. They don't, they don't mix. They're completely different. They're opposite. And it takes faith to operate in those things. But we all know, every one of you could give a testimony about how you had an enemy and they were against you, but you loved them and loved them and it turned around. Or someone wronged you and you forgave them. And after you forgave them, you know, it turned out and you got released from it. Or whatever the situation is. You was in a situation at work and you just had to start serving your employees and you got promoted. Whatever it is. We understand these things. They are opposite to the world's way of doing things. Because we belong to a different kingdom now, we no longer belong to the world. So look at this. If you've got your Bibles, Proverbs 11, 24. Proverbs 11, 24. One of my favorite verses here. It says, there is one who scatters, yet increases more. Some translation says give. There's, one that, there's people who give and yet increase more. And there's one who holds more than is right, but it leads to poverty. The world's way of doing money is get all the money you can, keep it all, don't give any away. If you go to church and the offering comes around, you know, slip a, slip a little bit of money in there just so people can see that you're giving or whatever and you feel better. But really, this doesn't make sense, the world's way of doing things. The kingdom of God says, you want to get ahead financially, you have to give. You want to get ahead financially, you have to give. And it doesn't make sense. Hang on a minute, I've got $1,000. I want to get ahead and God says, give 100 or 200 That gives me less. No, in God's kingdom, it gives you more. It doesn't make sense to our natural mind, but I'm telling you, it's the kingdom of God. And guess what? It takes faith to do it. It takes faith to do it. Now, uh, God gave me this message at 5 a.m. Saturday morning. I woke up and I was like, bam, he just dropped in my spirit. I've never taught this like this before. And I thought to myself, you know what? I, I, my first reaction was, God, I'm not going to teach that because it sounds like I'm trying to get people to give. So the first thing I want to tell you is, if you think I'm doing this for any other reason than to help you, then please do not give Give to the church. Don't give anything to me. Don't, I'm, I'm serious. This is for you guys. In fact, um, Paul talks about this. He says in, um, I believe it's 1 Corinthians. Let me find No, it's, it's, um, it's uh, um, Philippians, I believe. It's somewhere in the Bible, New Testament. He said, I'm, I'm not, not that I seek the gift somewhere in the New Testament. Paul wrote it. Not that I seek the gift, but I seek the fruit that abounds to your account. Okay, this is what I'm talking about today. I want to help you get ahead financially. I want to help you um, start unlocking some things financially. God wants you prosperous. God wants you financially prosperous today. That's the truth. That's the, the part of the gospel, and I want to help you with that. And, and this is one thing, this is part of the, the key, if you like, to financial prosperity. So in the kingdom of God, you give and you increase. Notice as well in that verse in Proverbs 11:24, 24, it says there's one who withholds more than is right. Just a little side note here, a little rabbit trail. You can withhold what is right. People say, well, savings and having a storehouse, that's lack of faith. No, it's godly to withhold a right amount. It's godly to have, be a steward of your finances. In fact, my book, Forms, Barnes and All Jars, deals a whole section of it, deals with how to be a steward in God's way. How to save money, how to live within your means, how to actually have a storehouse so God can bless your storehouses, how to have a storehouse. So it's right to withhold, but what's, what isn't right is withholding so much that you're not giving and you're withholding more than is right. So this is talking about giving, this is talking about the kingdom of God. So... And a few things here I want, to, I want to look at real quickly, if time will allow. The first one is, is we, we want to look at what, what giving does to us, okay? It, it puts God first place in our hearts. When we give, it makes God first place in our hearts, Matthew 6, 33. Okay, it defeats the love of money. If you have a love of money, and we can all have it, I mean, especially in America, England's the same. We're bombarded with commercials and stuff. You must have this to be happy. It doesn't matter what it is. I've bought stuff on infomercials that I haven't needed. And sometimes, you know, some of us are spending money we haven't got, 
buying things we don't need to impress people we don't know. Okay, that's just where we're consumers, right? That's what happens. You know what? It will defeat the love of money. If you've got a love of money, if you've got a coverage, if you start giving that money away, it will get, I mean, your flesh will scream at you. But it defeats the love of money. Um, it, it defeats coverage. It stops the world, word from being choked. You know what? The word can be choked in our life. Mark 4.19. We haven't got time to go there, but Mark 4.19 is the explanation of the parable of the sower. And Jesus says there's three things that choke the word of God in our life. There's three, three types of thorns that choke the word of God in our life. And they are all money-related. That's your homework. You can go there after service and look at that. They're all financially related. Okay? Cares this world, lust, uh, uh, deceitfulness of riches, and lust for other things. All finan- So if we don't have this financial thing sorted out, it can even choke the word in other areas of our life. It can be cho- the word can be choked in other areas of our life. In fact, I don't usually teach this. I've said it only a few times publicly over the last 11 years. But you know, our daughter was healed 11 years ago, and the night before she was healed, the offering bucket came around, and I'd already received so much from Andrew Romack's ministry, I thought, I'm going to make this a good offering, you know, one of those good offerings. Not just to, like, slip one, no, I'm going to make it a good offering, an offering that hurts a little bit. So I was like, Lord, how much shall I give? And right there, the Holy Spirit said, get everything in your bank right now, everything liquid right now. And I was like, whoa. So I said, Carly, she said, just do it. So we gave everything then. It was a little bit of a rich young ruler moment. And you know what? I'm not saying we bought, paid for Hannah's healing or anything like that. We, we, didn't, we didn't bribe God. It wasn't anything like that. This was a pure-hearted thing. What it was was it was me get putting my trust 100% in God and getting it off of riches. 100% on God. It was like, God, I'm trusting you 100% now. I didn't know my daughter would be healed the next day. But there's something special what happens when we give out that, that, uh, that tie of money. In fact, jo- Jesus talks about it, right, in, in, uh, in uh, Matthew uh, 6.24. Matthew 6.24 talks about you cannot serve two masters. You can only serve God or money. You choose. So it puts God first place in your, in, your, in your life. It stops the word being choked. And it even guides your heart. When you give, you know what? Our finances and our hearts are tied. I don't know how this works, but they're tied. And you say, no, no, brother, I'm more spiritual than that, actually. That's not true. Well, if I gave you a, you know, a, a $10,000 know, check and said, here you go, a $100,000 check, your heart would go, woo <laughs> If I gave you a $10,000, $100,000 IRS bill, your heart would go, oh. <laughs> it's like, I've had some of those, praise the Lord. Anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, um, I got off there thinking about my tax bill. But anyway, so I paid it. It's all good. So anyway, um, our hearts are tied to our finances. I don't know how it works exactly, but our hearts are tied to our finances. And when I'm telling you, you can, if you give in an area you like, how many of you got grandkids here? Any grandparents here? Okay. How many of you love your grandkids? You love your grandkids. How many of you could prove to me your love for your grandkids by showing me your bank balance? Yeah, show me your bank statement, <laughs> all the different things that come out here. Okay, what you love, you put, you, you, you put money towards. Okay, and when you, you, when you give towards the kingdom of God, it actually guides your heart. Uh, Psalms talks about guiding your heart. I believe that's a Proverbs, Proverbs 23, 19. It says you guide your heart. You can give and actually guide your heart. So some people say, how can I love God more? You start giving money into the kingdom of God. You start giving money to missionaries. You start giving money to ministries. You're guiding your heart. So here's a few things I want to talk about. That's the, that's the effects of giving, if you like. But a few things here is how to make your giving work, okay? I want, to ch- I want to share with you three things real quickly in the time we've got left on how to make your giving work, okay? So first of all, we all agree, right? It's God's will for us to prosper, okay? I didn't get a big enough amen, so let me, let me read you this real quickly. <laughs> just to make sure, okay, just to make sure, uh, if you've got your Bible, 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, okay? 2 Corinthians 8 and 9, we need to read this. I didn't get a loud enough amen. 2 Corinthians 8 and 9 says, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for your sakes, for our sakes, he became poor, that you, us, through his poverty, might become rich. This is 2 Corinthians 8 and 9. He became poor. Jesus became poor on earth so that we, through his poverty, could become rich. Yeah, but actually, that's talking about spiritually rich and rich in relationships and rich in, in, in the word of God. I agree. Amen. But you know what? This chapter, chapter 8, 2 Corinthians chapter 8 and 2 Corinthians chapter 9 is all finances. If you take this verse out of context... I'm telling you, that's, that's, that's misleading. This verse is a financial verse. The whole two chapters, go and read them. Chapter 8, chapter 9, all about finances, stewardship, giving. This verse is a financial verse. Jesus became physically poor on earth. He went to the cross with nothing so that we, through his poverty, could be made rich, financially rich. Yeah, the other stuff is included as well, but financially rich. Just like he became sin so he could become righteous, he became sickness and he took stripes in his back so we could be healed. Okay, it's the same thing. It's the exchange life. It's the great exchange life, praise God. And that's, that's the truth. That's the gospel right there. Jesus came, became poor so that we became rich. So God wants you financially rich today. God wants you financially prosperous. That's the truth. Amen. And I don't care what country, if other people listen to this, maybe this will go out other places. I've seen this work in Africa. I've seen this work in Asia. 
I did prison ministry and saw this work in prison. Prisoners prospered with no money in their prison, but they prospered. They were eating monkey nuts and smoking cigars. That'll mess with your theology. But anyway, so they, were, they were prospering in prison. The word of God works in prison. Sorry, Max, you can clear that up later. <laughs> I've got to give you something to work on. Is it biblical to smoke cigars? Ask Pastor Max. So I do not, I do not smoke, I'm just saying. So anyway... But those prisoners, I mean, they were, they were cons, right? But they were putting the word of God, and they were eating monkey nuts, and they were drinking expensive tea in prison. The prosperity message works. I've seen it work in Africa. I've seen it work in Asia. I've seen it work in South America. So it works, praise God. God wants us financially prosperous. So that is the truth right there. It's the great exchange. You know, uh, Romans 8, 30, 37, I think it is. Maybe it's not. Somewhere around there. It's in the Bible. Romans 8, 37, yet in all things we're more than conquerors. God made us more than conquerors in all things. That means in every area, we're more than conquerors. And, and I look at it like this. It's like a boxer, right? You've got the heavyweight boxer, and they're fighting. And they fight for 12 rounds or whatever. And at the end, they lift up one of their arms, one of the boxers. One of them knocks the other one down, lifts him up and says, this is the champion of the world. And he goes, oh, Adrian. And they give him, a, give him a big gold belt, and they give him like a purse. It's like half a million dollar prize money, a purse, right? don't know why they give a man a purse, but they give him a purse. <laughs> And he's all beaten up because he's, you know, blood, sweat and tears. He's been fighting for 12 rounds, right? But he's the champion. They lift his arms up. Here's the champion of the world. They say, here's a conqueror. Then his wife jumps in the ring and she walks across the ring and she kisses him on the cheek and she takes the half a million dollar prize money and she goes down to the mall. She's more than a conqueror, okay? She's more than a conqueror. So Jesus has done the work. Jesus has beaten sickness. He's beaten poverty. He's beaten sin. And we are more than conquerors through our relationship with him. Because of our relationship with him, we are more than conquerors. That's why it's the great exchange. We don't have to do anything, just receive it. Grace is provided it. By faith, we receive it, praise God. So three things real quickly to help your giving work. And they all start with the same letter because, man, I just wanted to do that. Because <laughs> all these great preachers, all these pastors and that, they always start with three, they have three points with the same letter. And I say, I'm going to have three points, and bless God, going to have the same letter. I don't care if it's like reading, writing, and arithmetic. It's going to be the same three letters. Okay, so, so the first thing is you need faith. If you want your giving to work, you've got you to operate in faith. There's no point giving without faith. In fact, Paul even talks about that. You can give all your possessions, but without faith, without love, it's, not, it's useless. Faith works by love. So you have to have faith. It takes faith. You have to believe it. You have to believe that sowing and reaping works. You have to believe that it's God's will for you to prosper. You have to believe that it's God's system to give. You have to believe that God wants you to prosper. Psalm 35, 27 says, Let the Lord be magnified, who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God wants you prosperous. The Lord takes pleasure in that. So you have to believe it. You have to believe that God wants you, wants you, righteous, wants you prosperous, just like you believe he wants us righteous. And you know what? And sometimes we don't act righteous, or we don't feel righteous, but we're righteous. Sometimes we don't act healed, we don't feel healed, but we're healed. Yeah. Sometimes we don't look yeah. prosperous. Our bank account doesn't look prosperous. Yeah. The car we drive doesn't look prosperous. The house we live in doesn't look prosperous. But bless God, we're prosperous. Yeah. We've been there. We've been in situations where we've had nothing. And I'm like, bless God. I thank you, Lord, I'm prosperous. Amen? Amen? So that's the first thing. You need to have faith. You need to have faith in God's word. You know, faith that it's him. Watch, watch your talk. Watch how you're thinking. Watch how you're doing like, life of anything you're believing for. You know, to have faith means you, you control your thoughts. You don't let your thoughts run away. Well, I'm not like one of those rich folks. Well, I never get ahead. Well, money doesn't grow on trees. What's money made of? Paper. paper. Where does paper come from? Trees. trees. That's a lie. <laughs> okay, there's always an abundance of money out there. Okay, there's an abundance of money out there. So watch yourself talk. Have faith in God that God wants you to prosper. And even if your circumstances don't like, look like it, especially when your circumstances don't look like it, that's when you say, God, I'm prosperous. I thank you, Lord, I'm prosperous. Just like you do when you're for, for your healing, the same way. Amen. The second thing is, you need finances. If you want to give, you need finance. You want your giving to work. You've got to have finances to be able to give. Okay? The good news is, you don't need a lot. In fact, God is looking for people to give out of what they have not what they're going to have one day. And it's easier for you. Any billionaires in here? I need to say millionaires, but that could be a bit close. Any billionaires in here? No billionaires, right? Okay. How many of you know it's, you could be more generous than a billionaire today in your giving? That's the truth right there because it talks about giving out of what we have, not about... So you know what? The widow woman, I'll give you a quick example. The widow woman, okay, she comes in. Jesus is watching the offering. That would be interesting, wouldn't it? If Jesus was up here watching people give. And it says, he was watching how they give. So Jesus was watching how they give. Let me find that scripture for you. This is in, um, I believe it's the, the, the account I was going to look at was uh, Mark. Mark 4. No, maybe not. One of the accounts I was looking at it says he was looking how they gave. So it wasn't just, he wasn't just looking how they gave. He was looking how they gave. That's even more important, how they gave. So Jesus was looking at the offering. They were coming up and he was looking at how they gave into the offering. 
So he was watching their motives. He was watching how they gave. And these, these rich people were giving money. He didn't rebuke them. That's all good. They were giving money. But a widow came and she had two mites. That's all she had. And she gave those two mites. And Jesus said, whoa, disciples, come here. This is important. This is some good giving. This widow gave generously today. Now, all she gave was two mites. And these, these businessmen were giving them big oversized checks with the big smiles they're putting in the offering. She just gave two mites, two pennies, very small amount. But she gave all she had. So it was generous to her. So we can be generous today because we can give out of what we have. And people say, well, actually, how can you tell if something's generous and something's not generous? We haven't got time to go to the scriptures, but you know what? You can decide. You, basically, it depends on your situation. And you'll know when you're giving generously because your flesh will let you know. <laughs> okay? Your flesh will tell you if it's generous or not. So for one person, it might be $100. For another person, it might be $100,000. I've got a friend. I watched him write a $100,000 check. I looked to see if it was my name. It wasn't. Never mind. <laughs> it's okay. It was AWM. I was, I was pleased for him. But... Here's the thing, for him, $100,000 was generous. To us, it might be $100, okay? It depends where you're at financially, but you can be generous with your finances today, and your flesh will tell you, because as you start to write the check, you'll start to get sweaty, your palms, <laughs> thank you, Lord, and you start writing that check, and you put the check in the bucket, and you watch the bucket go, you're like, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. And you're thinking, maybe I could phone the bank on Monday and cancel the check. <laughs> you go to bed that night, you think, did I really give that amount? You woke up in the morning, did I really give that amount? You're not worried about the harvest, you're just happy for a refund. If that's how you feel, okay, that is a generous gift to you. Like I said, it could be a $20 to one person, it could be $100,000 to another. That's a generous gift. So you can give generously, praise God, and it will work, praise God. The, the, you'll you, uh, reap generously. He who, who, who uh, sows generously will reap generously, praise God. So it takes, it takes finances, you have to have money, and God gives us the power to get wealth. He doesn't just give us wealth, He gives us the power to get wealth. Deuteronomy 8 18. He gives us the power to get wealth because He wants to establish His covenant. So every single one of us as born-again believers today have the power to get wealth. That may be different things with different people. But I'm telling you, you've got the power to get wealth. You've got the power to be promoted in your job. You've got the power to do things that are beyond your natural ability in your workplace. You start believing it, start confessing it, start saying, you know what, God, I thank you, Lord, I'm a problem solver. I thank you, Lord, I'm making a difference. I thank you, this company I work for is blessed. I thank you, my boss is blessed because I work for him. Even though in the natural, he's a piece of work or she's a piece of work. He said, you know, I'm going to bless this boy. You know what? Joseph went about and he blessed Potiphar's house because he, was, because he believed that he had, he had the power to get wealth and the Lord was with him. He blessed the prison cell and all the prisons were blessed and he got promoted in prison and then he ends up being in the, in the palace and ended up being the second most powerful man in the world, working for Pharaoh, who, how you know, wasn't a darling, you know, Pharaoh wasn't like the, the nicest Christian you've ever met. But Joseph honoured his position and respected him and had influence. So, you know what, this is for someone today. Don't speak curses over your boss. Don't moan about your boss. Start praising God for him, blessing him, and speaking those things that be not as if they are. And say, thank you all for my job. Thank you for my situation. I thank you all I can make a difference here. And start honouring the position, even if you think there's, you can't find anything else to honour. I've worked for some people. I could tell you. Anyway, I won't go into that. But. So you've got the power to get wealth. Maybe you're going to start a business. Maybe you're going to start to do something, and you're going to start to invest, or you're going to start a business. So nowadays with the internet, this is the easiest time you can ever make money. I'm just telling you, I've never known such a time to make money as now. And um, I was born before the internet. That's how old I was. So, um, so you can make money now, but online you can do things. There's so many ways you can make money. You can have multiple streams of income now. You can have different things going at once. I mean, it's, it's amazing. You can go on vacation and rent your house out on Airbnb. You can, you can sell the stuff and junk in your house and make $1,000 over a weekend just from the stuff you haven't used. You can go online and start your own store on eBay and have national, international um, uh, coverage and international billing and everything already done for you. You can do crafts and sell on Etsy. There's so many situations now. You can do your own videos and show people how to do something and they'll pay you for you to show them how to do it if you're an expert in that area. You can tutor people. I've got a friend who plays guitar. So I need to make some extra money. I said, do guitar lessons. I met her the other day. She's got full-time. Now she's doing that full-time. She's, she's got so big, her husband's quit the job he didn't like and he's doing her marketing for her, and they're both living better than they were before with two jobs just by her doing guitar lessons online and visiting people. It's powerful. There's ways of making money. You have the power to get wealth, praise God. So if you want to give and you want to be able to give more, you need to have finances, and God's given us the power to get wealth. He gives seed to sowers, okay? The third thing, this is my the third F, see? Faith, finances. I know you're impressed. <laughs> just act like it. The third thing is follow through or action. <laughs> It's always that third one that gets you, right? <laughs> Follow through. You've got to put action to your faith. Faith without works is dead. Okay? Faith without, faith without corresponding actions is dead. If you truly believe something, you're going to act. We had a fire out in Colorado Springs about seven or eight years ago, and then my friends texted me, actually, the fire's coming your way. I said, no, I'm okay. And then someone else texted me, actually, the someone phoned me, your fire's coming your way. I said, no, you know what, it's okay. 
I know the fire's around, but it will be okay. I didn't truly believe the fire was near me. Then I went up on top of the bluff where we lived. We, we lived in, on some acreage. I went on top of the bluff, and I looked out, and I saw them flames about a quarter of a mile away, 100 foot high. And you know what? Now I believed it. When I truly <laughs> believed it, it spurred me to action. So I come running down the hill. I was like, get everyone in the RV. Let's go. So we jumped in the RV. We tried to grab the cats. We had two cats at the time, the craziest things. I couldn't catch them. They were running up the walls, literally running up the walls. Couldn't catch them. So we got in the RV and we drove off. Carly was in the, in the car behind me. Hannah was with me in the RV. And we're driving down the driveway. And she started crying. She said, but Dad, the cats, the cats. We had to leave them there. She said, the cats are going to burn. I said, that's right, honey. Look on the bright side. No, I didn't. I said, I said, I said, I said <laughs> I said, we'll go back for those cats. Well, I went back for those cats. I've got a scar on my arm to prove it where they scratched me. So anyway, when I really like, saw them flames, and our house was fine, it didn't burn down, the, the fire stopped before it got to our property, praise God. But when I saw those flames, I believed it, and I went out. If I told you, you know, in your, in your front yard, there's $100,000, and you believed it, you'd get a shovel out and start digging, right? right. If you said, oh, I know there's $100,000 out there, and, and went home and didn't do anything, you didn't believe it. So faith takes action. Faith without works is dead. Faith without corresponding action. You truly believe something, you're going to act. So it takes follow-through. You have to do something. You have to have some follow-through. And that was James 2.26, if you take notes. You have to do something. There has to be some follow-through. Um, this is 2 Corinthians 8 and, and 10. 2 Corinthians 8 and 10 says, it is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and we desire. And again, this is talking, Paul is talking about giving here. This is a financial statement. He's talking about giving. 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 10. And in this, I give advice. It is to your advantage not only to be doing what you began and also what you were desiring to do a year ago, but now you also must complete the doing of it. That as was this readiness to desire it, so there also must be a completion out of what you have. For first, there's a willing mind and it's accepted according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. So Paul says there must be a completing of it. God gives seed to the sower. He doesn't give seed to the thinker. He gives seed to the sower. He multiplies the seed we sow, not the, not the seed we just leave there and think about sowing. Right, right. So we have to start doing something. We have to put action to our faith and start doing it, and that's how it works. And it takes faith. Let me tell you, it takes faith. God's told me to give amounts of money, and it scared me. And I'm like, Lord, are you sure? I'm like, first of all, I'm like, oh, I can't hear you, Lord. It must be the devil. It must be the devil telling me to give this money to this missionary to help him and build a Bible school and to feed these poor kids. That must be the devil. But it's not, it's God. And I'm like, I can't hear you, God. And then finally, I go, okay, Lord, I'll do it. And when I do it, I tell you, it's powerful because the increase comes. I could tell you so many stories. But you need to, do, you need to follow through. You ne- actually need to do it and actually, actually put some action to your faith and do it. God gives seed to the sower, 2 Corinthians 9 and 10. And um, there's so many examples we go into. I'm out of time. But there's so many examples we go into. When we do it, when we actually do put, put action to our faith, we see things happen, praise God. And when we do it, we must remember to be cheerful givers, generous givers. I've talked about being generous givers and faithful givers. How many of you actually plan your giving? How many of you giving is the, don't put your hand up. How many of you giving is the top line of your budget? How many of you, if you lost your job, you'd wake up in the morning and think, oh, how am I going to give? You know, you say, how am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to pay the mortgage? How am I going to pay the cars? How am I going to feed the kids? All noble things. But how many of you get up and say, how am I going to give now? Yeah. I can't give now. We need giving as the top priority. Amen. Giving needs to be our top priority. When we start doing that and following through, I'll give you one quick example. I was sat in, in my home church, Carriage Christian Centre, and Pastor Lawson got up and said, we've got one more payment to make on this building before we're debt free. And I, love, and I just love to give. Me and my wife love to give. In fact, we had faith checks. We wrote out faith checks and put them in a safe. You know, we didn't give them, don't, give, don't do faith checks and give them to people, because then you give them to people, they go, woohoo, and you say, that's a faith check, brother, just give me 10 years. That doesn't bless them. So I put, we put them in the safe. We went to imagine giving away large amounts of money. So we, anyway, put them in our safe, and praise God, we got to give some of those away. So pastors get on one more payment, and the Lord said to me, you can make that payment. I said, I'd like to make that payment. He said, you can make that payment. I said, I want to make that payment. So pastor came off the stage and said, Lawson, I want to make that last payment on that church. I want, I want to pay the last payment. He said, see me Monday. I went home, and I thought, oh, no. I didn't ask how much it was. Could be 10 grand, could be 20 grand. And I was sweating all night. I was like, oh no, what have I committed to? So I went to see him the next day. He said, it's $3,300. I said, praise the Lord, I can do that. So I wrote him a check out for 30. I'm only telling you this because I'm talking about giving. So I wrote a check out for $3,300. And he said to me, God's going to give you a $330,000 house supernaturally. I said, like, amen, I'll receive it. I haven't got time to go into the story. Supernatural. We're talking about people being flown from England over to America without any clue, especially just to buy a house from me. I mean, just crazy stuff. Anyway, cut a long story short. Completely supernatural within five years. This is supernatural. It'll take me an hour to explain it, but it was supernatural, trust me. In five years, we now have a $330,000 house in Colorado Springs, paid for cash, don't owe a penny. Amen? That's God. And, and nine years ago, we came here with suitcases, like 18 suitcases, 16 of them full of kids' toys, 
And basically, and no money, and no money. That's what God can do. But it was through giving that he did it. So God wants to get things through you. God's the biggest giver. And he, listen, he wants to get things to you. He's not trying to take from you. He's trying to get things to you. He doesn't need your money. He's trying to get things to you. Okay, praise God. And like I said, this is, if you think this is any reason, you know, the rich young ruler is a great example. Jesus saw the rich young ruler and he said, there's one thing you lack. In fact, it says Jesus, looking at him, loved him. He said, there's one thing you lack. He said, go your way and sell what you have, give to the poor. Okay, God's trying to get more to us. He loves us so much. He wants us to give because he loves us and he wants to give more to us. And like I said, if, if, if you think any way this is for selfish gain, please hear my heart here. I want you to prosper. When, when you start putting your giving seriously, God will start, God, you're allowing God to get your getting more seriously, praise God. When you get, put your giving first, God's going to put your getting on top of his list. And we've seen it work in our lives day in, day out. Let me tell you, God's trying to get things to you. And part of that is you have to get, get, be able to give things over to God in the area of finances and he'll get things to you. Amen? Can I pray for you real quickly? Father God, I thank you, Lord. I thank you that you're trying to get things to us. I thank you that you want us to prosper financially. And I thank you, Lord, that you want us to be free from the love of money. You want us to be free and to be able to walk in freedom when it comes to finances. And right now, I pray for everyone who's listening to me. And I thank you, Lord, that you have made them prosperous. And I thank you, Lord, they're going to take steps. They're going to take actions. They're going to start trusting you, Lord. And I thank you for the people that have never truly trusted you with their finances. They're taking that step today. And I thank you, Lord, you, you want to get even more to them. So we can trust you with our finances. We can trust you, Lord, because you always have good things for us and you want us to prosper so we can give even more and, uh, and do even more for your kingdom, Lord. I thank you, Lord, that you have made us prosperous and I thank you, Lord, for your promises. You're a great God, Lord. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.